push a button. I am turning it off and back on again. That is my approach to solving technical issues. I hear it works 75% of the time. That might have been a statistic I just made up on the spot, but don't you worry about that. We're going to check YouTube right now and see. It looks like it's, is it live now? Are we good on YouTube? <laughs> The good old flipping it off and back on again. Ah, seems to have worked. Very good, very good. All right, welcome everybody who's now uh, sneaking on into the stream. All seems well and fair. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think it's actually dumb that that works uh, a lot of the time, but you know, I guess I shouldn't complain. So yeah, um, let's just start over from the top. Hello, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Game stream. I'm your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. That means that my job is to serve you. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be in the hot seat, answering your questions as much as we possibly can. We're a, we're a pretty transparent company, us game devs over here at Rockfish. And so we want to give you as much information as possible about our product um, so that you kind of know what it's about. Uh, and what you can do, and uh, what we're planning on adding to the game space. Now, we're not going to give, like, teasers and stuff, so if you're like, well, what's the next content edition going to be, and show me all the depths and all the blah, I'm not going to just hand that to you. I mean, there's release windows and how we reveal content, right? But if you have questions about the product that we are working on, that's this is the time. The next two hours, we are here to just do that with you. That's what we do every single Friday. That is a big focus. In addition to that, you'll, um, a lot of individuals, especially the diehards, they'll always look in that upper left corner, looking at the version history. Since I am playing on a dev branch, you could happen to see added content to the game space that isn't technically ready to show yet. And that's very much uh, where we're at right now. So um, I'm just going to load up my save that allows me to uh, pick up where we left off. So we don't, hopefully, don't show anything that um, I'm legitimately not allowed to show. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, uh, there might be like a little tease or two, depending on RNG alone. As you know, we are continuing to add more items and equipment into the game space. Um, and the Zarkov update, uh, or excuse me, the Kaip Nebula update, Stranger Skies, which is going to launch in the experimental branch this freaking month. Oh my gosh. We're already, we're, it's here. We're, it's, we're, we're close. Oh my gosh, this month. Okay, it's kind of cheating because it's the first of the month, but still, I'm excited. I'm sure you're getting pumped too. Um, so we're going to be diving in, uh, doing the things that we do. And, uh, and yeah, and, and we're just, we're going from there. Did I seriously just save in space? Is this really? Oh, yeah, because we left. I think it was the jump suppressors that we just took out. And now we're uh, getting ready to go to the next location. So we are using the new body types for the Vanguard, which you can see here, the, the body and the engine. Both of these are coming in the update. Um, and there might be more. There might not be. I don't actually have confirmation of that yet. I would love to see more. Um, I know that we are working on new ships. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's good. I got a smirk on my face because we, we did have an incredibly solid play session this week, uh, internally. Um, and again, it's a lot of, uh, hang on, hold that thought, Adam. Um, in fact, I need to, uh, voice mute everybody so they don't talk over me. Um, but yeah, we had a really solid play session, uh, ironing out some kinks, getting things prepped. Because with just a month to get, less than a month now, less than a month to get all this stuff in order uh, for delivery, uh, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some work. It's going to be some work. So, uh, no game sound? Oh, snap. Hang on a second. Oh, I have it muted. Why do I have, why do I have it muted? This is a question of the ages. This should be a lot better. As the music ends of our fast traveling, hang on a second. Let's let's get a little bit more fast travel. We have to we have to hang around for the dialogue. Oh gosh. All right, that's fine. Whatever. These guys can chat. That's fine. 
Let's answer some questions while they're chatting and then we'll get some more, we'll get some beautiful music. Is Everspace 2 gonna get an actual logo or is it just gonna be the two forever? Um, I don't have the answer to that. Michael, do you have more information? Are we just gonna have a two or are we going to uh, move into a logo like with Everspace 1 having the outlawed drone? It's a great question. I don't know. I would think we would do something else with it. Maybe? But uh, I've been wrong before. Uh, so let's see if we get a response. Uh, then we have, we have another question. Uh, bought the game during the Steam Summer Sale and have yet to download it. I went, I want enough content to keep me playing for as long as possible. Obviously, so was wondering if now is a good time to play. So I'm gonna actually, uh, Greasy Ginzo. So it sounds like what you want is a game that you can keep coming back to over and over and over again. That's not gonna clog or mess up any save files. And to that, um, I would actually encourage you to wait until full release. Uh, I'm dead serious here. Um, and the reason why I say that is because if you're looking for specific content to uh, keep you invested, I think early access is gonna throw you for a loop because the content isn't finished. You're going to adhere to the norms of where we're at in development and that's going to maybe produce uh, improper reactions since we don't have everything perfectly balanced. We don't have all the content that's meant to be encountered through that process. Uh, and it might even give you a sour taste in your mouth. Now, I could be completely wrong. It might be exactly what you're looking for to, to you know, um, get your mind racing on what's to come too. Um, but just that general, that general response, I almost think that you should just keep waiting it out. Now, if you want to provide feedback, if you want to be a part of the development uh, to help us out uh, and figure out what might be the best ways to go about uh, a game system or an item or a, a simple uh, encounter that you participate in, by all means, dive in, have things happen, say, this is awesome, this really sucks, and let us know um, from there. So that is what I will, that is what I will say regarding that. Hopefully that's good insight. Um, but yeah, very much uh, wait for a completed product um, unless you are willing to get in the thick of the gunk that we also have. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, yeah, everyone talking about the game sound. Yeah, sorry, that's my bad. Completely my bad. We're gonna get a little bit of travel music in here to, to dance to while I'm looking through making sure all other questions have been answered before we can go in. Spoot Knight's got a question. Since we have a, re a naming scheme for the ship modules, what is currently your favorite combination for the medium ships? Curious what RFG staff's opinion is. So Spoot Knight, I love that question. I have not spent enough time to, um, to even like be able to answer that question <laughs> because I mean, I have so much fun still just like changing color schemes of the same freaking thing over and over and over. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. And the fact that there's still a lot more coming, I'm trying not to get too attached to anything since the next thing might be the newest like desire to have. A very, very hard question. Very hard question. If we're talking just from a gameplay standpoint though, in the mediums, I think I have to go with the striker. I love the up close and uh, just like destructive force that it brings using its specialty. So uh, there's that. But aesthetically, man, I, I do love the naming convention of the Sentinels probably the most, but the Sentinel is not my favorite medium ship. So there you go. There's a lot of information for you. All right. Now let's fly into Vesna. Um, so yeah, the official response from Michael 
about the Everspace 2 logo. We are happy with the Everspace 2 logo. No plans for changing. Thank you for the response, Michael. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start doing this mission as I continue to watch all of your questions and conversations transpire. Um, man, I am I am getting pumped for the end of this month. Let me tell you what. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also had a little bit of frame drops there. Everything looks to be checking out now though, so uh, we should be good. Everspace 2, the quest for more money. I see a reference to a movie that I quite enjoy a lot, Deshra. So thank you for that. Uh, but there, there is no Schwartz that exists in this universe. Any chance sometime a competition to try to win a key for the game? Oh yeah, I am absolutely confident that we will have those inevitably. Absolutely confident. But there aren't any plans for that right now. No plans at the moment. I hear him mention RNG and I get excited since it's what I wish for most less of it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Will the procedural contracts be able to pick planetary areas or will they be space only? I like the planets a lot. I'd love more reason to visit them more often, says Gabriel Leal. Uh, Gabriel Leal? Gabriel Leal. Uh, yeah, a great question. So the uh, contracts, the jobs, job boards, they are not done. And we actually haven't touched them in a while. So um, I'm rather confident that planetary locations will be possible. I also know that whenever we were generating them at first, we had problems with the planetary locations uh, in the generation thereof was a bit wonky so um that's why they don't appear as of right now um but they very much could uh be added in the future and i'm i'm fairly confident that they will um little dangerous of me saying though because i don't have confirmation of that fact um it's more just me being overly hopeful than anything else uh, but i do know that we have a lot of new jobs that are still in the works um, I shouldn't say a lot. We have we have a, a number of new jobs that are still in the works that we'll be adding to the game space to mix things up a little bit more um, and take you to other and new locations as well in the process. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and repair our ship. Since we usually forget to do that, we're just doing it right out of the gate, so we don't. Um, and then, let's see. I think all we have to do is just work. Yeah, we're just going to follow the mission chain right now. Which, uh, what even is our mission chain? Goodness gravy. Ah, yeah, we have to go to Devana Gas Orbit. So we're going to do the little boss battle thing. Spoilers? Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, by the way... I am playing through the main missions uh, of the game, so um, if you're just here to kind of see a sample of gameplay, awesome. If you're uh, here and you are, like, not open to spoilers, it's going to be a tricky stream. Just uh, close your eyes, but keep your ears open, and uh, type away any questions that you have, of course. So, yeah. Can you rename ships? So, as of right now, no, you cannot rename ships. And I said that answer exactly the way that I needed to. <laughs> All right, so we're now at this absolutely gorgeous location. I love this skybox. I think the team did a rather fine job of it and now we're going up against a lot of foes that are higher level than us one could argue that doing so in this little bitty ship is rather foolish we'll see how foolish it is in a moment either i will die embarrassingly or um 
maybe you'll see that I've actually been practicing a little bit. <laughs> a couple of these elite fighters because we don't want those to pull over at us even though gmb has got them locked down Whew. probably gonna need to change this secondary or uh, this alternate primary weapon Let's get back down to the base. All right, one more drone on me. He's got to go. All right, very good. Seems to be a bit of conversation still lingering on the logo. So uh, I want to be super clear here, guys. Um, whenever I give you a response of saying, hey, that's actually the way it is and it's not going to change, um, unfortunately, that does not mean it's open to discussion. So anyone who wants to continue the conversation on the logo design, it's not really going to go so hot. Um, mostly that we're just going to kind of ignore it. Um, and it doesn't feel good. I don't, I don't want to do that. So um, if you are super adamant about our logo for whatever reason that looks like, I implore you to head over to the forums and leave feedback accordingly. And yes, I'm very serious. Even as something as simple as the game's logo, if you feel that you need to rip that thing to shreds and talk about what would make it better or whatever, feel free to do that. But let's avoid that style of conversation in the chat uh, since the, if the question's been answered and I wanna answer some other hot burning questions that you guys have about game development, okay? Is that good? Is that cool? No hard feelings at all if you don't like our logo. I just wanna make sure you're getting the attention you need at the right facilitated location. Cause it's not, you're not gonna get any attention in the chat. Okay, I just wanna, I wanna make that clear. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna keep going. I'm also gonna make sure I'm not missing any other questions. Uh, what's the purpose of a thermal gun outside of for people who don't want to aim? Um, it's got some pretty nice energy management to it. Um, so you can do some, some decent energy, especially when you have it coupled with something that does a lot of kinetic. Uh, so I like the thermal gun, especially against the outlaw faction, since their shields aren't crazy. So you only need a little bit of energy damage anyway. So you fire them with near guaranteed shots and then you swap over to, you know, a super powerful kinetic and it's a nice little combination. Now, you don't have to use that. It's not necessarily the best combination. It's just what I enjoy. Um, each one of the weapons provides kind of a unique trade-off of what it can provide. So yeah, and it's gonna service some people much better than others. And in the moment, what I'm recognizing especially is that I have a lot of targets that are uh, just hold, you know, these turrets and whatnot. So it's probably best if I were to have um, two weapons that are kinetic damage in this particular instance. Let's even see if we have another weapon. We have flak. Probably not the best bet. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and keep what we have. Oh, that doesn't even target the shield generator. Ooh, it's not big enough target. All right, but we should still be fine against these turrets uh, just because our ship is rather evasive. So even though this is inefficient, we're gonna do this anyway. There we go. Excellent. Uh, what are you guys going to do about the storage of the ships? You like the large storage of the gunship, but I prefer the combat abilities of the striker. And if the small ships too, that's even less cargo I can hold around. Yeah, so higher tiers provide more space. So um, we're also considering, uh, we haven't had a lot of internal conversations about it because it's in game and it's not something we can feasibly test right now. But we do wanna make sure that we're not doing anything uh, so crazy to, uh, to to break the game space as you're working through it. Um, 
translated, that means in an in-game state where carrying capacity uh, shouldn't really be restricted too much, we're looking at more of having like the cargo be much more consistent across the board between tier four ships, as opposed to um, you know a much smaller cargo on the light ships and a, and a larger cargo on the heavy ships, right? So there'll probably still be some variety, but they'll be much more close to each other. Um, so that's one way that we are, uh, at least the last time we talked about that, which was like months ago. Again, it hasn't been a subject of conversation, but that is something to, uh, to do. Fine, but I'm lazy to go to the forums with that logo stuff. Okay, then you're just not going to get an answer. Sorry to, sorry to tell you that, but, uh, kind of, kind of your own problem there, bud. Sorry. All right. Take out the rest of these turrets. Wonderful. Eric's alt button is still not mapped for any ship. Wait, what? Oh no, my button's mapped. The G button? Is that what you're referring to? Are you making a joke and I'm not understanding what it is? Is it just because I like hardly ever use the <laughs> hardly ever use the ultimates? I should use the ultimates more, that's for sure. Here, we'll use it right now. And the probably the worst case to use it, since it's so easy to dodge the bomb throwers, but uh <laughs> Alright, we're gonna we're gonna turn it off. If we were in the midst of all the fighters coming down on us, I would probably be more effectively using that, but, ah, eh, whatever. All right, now that's taken care of, we can fly on inside. Ultimate is perfect for B-roll footage. Uh, yes, I completely agree, in fact. <laughs> Oh, got, getting the lag spikes, no big deal. All right. Now, the one benefit here that we have as the Vanguard is that we have mobility, and we're gonna need that in this tight space. Since things are, are gonna hurt us a lot if we're not too careful. Now, I'm getting a little bit of overcharge. I, I could do better about that, but Overcharge is when you are boosting faster than your normal speed, the Vanguard will generate over shields, basically. And uh, especially when you're in a situation where you can't move around a lot, it's nice to have those bonus shields. I mean, there's, there's not a case where it's not good to have bonus shields, right? Oh, that's not a button. I always do that, every time. Let's destroy the shield generators instead. Perfect, excellent. I think it's kind of uh, interesting watching individuals stream this part of the game. Um, these spaces that are highlighted in green are meant for you to, oh, no, no, sir. No, thank you, please, please go away. Much better. They're designed for you to hide in and when the vents are running, then it turns red showing you that uh it's i mean it's blowing you back right so you have to be a little bit careful in your approach as you're moving down the trench you can just boost all the way down quickly uh that's another viable option but uh oh that was a star forged oh baby no that was a swift dang i had my hopes up um yeah now, we're going to keep our rapid decimator. Let's go ahead and get rid of a couple items to make a little bit more room.
I thought we equipped this last time. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use this, but we need a better shield so badly. Basically, the difference between these two, this one recharges super fast, uh, but it has a lesser capacity overall. But because it's such a higher level than our last shield, its capacity was even greater. So, uh, so there's that. <laughs> it's greater by one, but we'll take it. So it's a better shield, technically, and it recharges a lot faster. All right, let's also go ahead and invest some stuff into our perks, um, just to get those out of the way. So we're not hanging on to that equipment. Oh yeah, we need this, we need to invest here. Cool. Made a little bit more room as well. Good stuff. Aleth, what's your question? Is there a full on rarity tiers for gear like common and common rare legendary exotic? Yeah, so um, probably could see it a little bit. Um, I just mean mousing over things, but and it also sounds like others have answered your question already, but just kind of visually showing you commons are gray, uncommons are green, uh, rares are blue, superiors are magenta, and then uh, legendaries are orange as of right now, uh, but the legendaries are not done, so we don't have any to show you. It's actually possible to get a legendary through uh, a certain exploit, but uh, regardless, it doesn't have any of the legendary properties yet. It just has legendary stats. Um, so, you know, take that what it's worth. We might have even taken that exploit out. Eh, whatever. Regardless, that's the current system. Um, and then in regards to um, items that are like manufacturer made, manufacturer items, can also have like uh, be certain tiers as well. So I'll show you that in just one second here as we fly through here to trigger an event. Uh, we have an Energizer SP. This is made by Shiva, Shiva Systems. And uh, you can get a Shiva system in anything other than common. So it's either gonna be uncommon, rare, or superior. Shield ST, oh my gosh, I was talking about the, the, wait, did we miss, is that? Yeah, this one should be the one that has a lot more capacity, but the recharge speed of this one's insane in comparison. Oh, it's the delay and the shutdown duration. Yeah, I probably should have kept my last shield actually. I, I just reverse Uno'd myself. Oh my gosh. Well. The deed is done. I can't get that shield back. Of course, I could always craft a new one. Uh, let's see. How far up could we go? I could do this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to unlock the energy core, and then we're going to unlock the shield. And we're going to roll the dice and craft a new shield, see what we get. Uh, that actually stinks. So we're going to uh, dismantle that and try again. The recharge delay and shutdown duration is pretty nice here. Um, I don't think the capacity is a problem. We're gonna accept this one, but we're also gonna try again. Let's see what else we can get. Uh, nope. Nope. Just seeing what we can get. Let's try a couple more. Eh, eh. Nope. Man, I want, I want a shield XC is what I really would like to see. I keep getting standard shields. All right, this is our last attempt. All right, we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and keep the one that we got. I like this one better because of that recharge delay and shutdown duration. Um, also, want to point out uh, while I was in the crafting uh, screen, this is also not completely done. There's still a bit more coming to crafting. There's still a bit more coming to uh, the modifying, which is uh, let me just show this screen where right now we have increased rarity, upgrade level, and adapt item. 
Uh, we recognize that that's not a lot of opportunity. Um, it's a placeholder. So more is coming. Yeah. Yeah, I did get rid of the good shield. You're right. Oops. So we're going to go ahead and keep this prime shield and get rid of the shield ST. Completely getting rid of it so we can't go back. <laughs> Bearder Frog says, RNG debate go. Isn't it annoying? Isn't it? I mean, it's, a, it's an aspect of crafting. It's an aspect of trying to get something better than what you're currently using. It's... It's intended game design. I know you're kidding. <laughs> but I'm serious. <laughs> Show me a, a looter shooter that doesn't have an aspect of RNG where you're trying something over and over again. And I'll show you a bad looter shooter. <laughs> All right. Do you plan to add more weapons? Yes, we do. All right, let me, let me take on this guy, this outlaw leader. So there's this shield that's generated between uh, this section of the map. We're gonna try and focus down. Oh gosh, our shields are already down. We're actually gonna let our shields recharge. So I don't want to. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna play this a bit safe. Recharge our shields faster. All right, now we're gonna try and focus things down. He's a level 13, I'm only a level 11. And I would consider this guy a, a mini boss. So he just popped, oh, oh, which side is he on? Okay. If you cross sides while firing at me, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. Okay, good. And it appears that the outlaws, this particular outlaw leader, has found a way to utilize some colonial tech. This laser might seem a little bit familiar to Everspace One vets, in fact. Something that came from the colonial warship technology. Oh, that one's also, okay, no, 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 we're good, we're good. Pretty sure he's immune to EMP. Oh, no, he's not, good. Okay, his armor's almost gone. Oh, yikes. Okay, much better. We're gonna focus this down and then I'll return to chat. So one second. That, that was close. Disabled. This is a this is a much more comfortable battle. <laughs> Stay on the side. Excellent. Cross, good, good. All right. This magnetic repulsor, um, I could use it against the um, the Weber drones, but not against this guy. No. So we are not done with devices. I will also say that and what they are limited to and what they can accomplish. But I'm not uh, implying anything there either. Or maybe I am. App 
absolutely don't want to get Weber droned with that beam laser. level to boot so that'll help with the stats a little bit getting us closer to the perks at level 15 wonderful all right so quick timeout want to make sure i'm getting all your questions answered it's a mining laser uh no it's more of a um a thermal laser is the the canonical term for it Are there black holes like the first game? At this moment, we do not have any black holes present. Um, I will say that we are working on uh, celestial activities and challenges in the game space. Um, but I can also say that right now we haven't been working on anything super crazy. Um, and black holes has not been something uh, we have been working on. Could it show up? Yeah, black holes could show up. Will they? I don't know. I don't know. That's something that we had to evaluate the game space on in Everspace 2 to make sure that it fits uh, the, the more open world aspect that we have going now as opposed to complete procedural generation and you have to deal with what's going on in the moment. Uh, and the reason, I want to explain that just, just briefly, uh, where if we create a black hole, it's not something that you like wouldn't have on the charts, right? Like you'd probably have somebody... Uh, some scientist who says, hey, there's a black hole that's happening here. So, um, you know, we could maybe have scientists uh, study it or whatever. And, you know, all that type of stuff. It would be a permanently bound location. It's not something you would just randomly encounter like you could in Everspace 1. Um, the reason it works there is because of the roguelike formula. But again, because now we have a persistent game world, it's uh, less intuitive. So again, I'm not trying to say that we're not gonna do black holes because it's a possibility, but the aspect of presentation and challenge that it has now is far less significant because of how the game space has changed, okay? So we'll see, we'll see. Time will tell, time will tell. So good question, good question. I really enjoyed the, the challenges of the black holes in Everspace 1. I thought they looked pretty, and uh, I liked getting rewarded with dark matter as well. It was a nice fishing location for high tier equipment. Now you are gonna see some stream stuttering. I uh, did some smoke tests of this location, and it, even my computer likes to chug a little bit. We recognize that there are certain moments that could use a little bit more optimization here and there. And uh, you guys will be pleased to know that there are um, updates to even current aspects that are being used, current uh, assets that are in the game that will help with optimization. I think this location's one of them that's recognized. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm talking about it and we know, so yeah, pretty sure it is. Okay, drone. Where did that where did that drone go? Alright. Okay, now I'm going to uh, give some love over to YouTube since I've been answering Twitch questions. I see a question pertaining to uh, future plans for Everspace 2, um, like DLC. So yeah, so back way back when the Kickstarter was established, 
we didn't even mention that we wanted to do DLC from that point. So it's not something that's coming out of the blue. Like we wanted to establish a deadline for the main game to be produced. And then uh, based on the level of financial success and ability to keep the lights on in the studio, we would continue working on the product um, if, you know, if that were a possibility. And it very much looks like it is a possibility. It's something that we are ironing out uh, very, very good chance. Uh, in fact, I can, I can all but guarantee <laughs> that we will have DLC for Everspace 2. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so so there's that. But first, we're going to obviously get the base game done, and then we'll add in what, uh, what we feel needs to be approached in that DLC at that time. So yeah, it's a good question. I can't believe I'm taking armor damage. It's kind of... I guess I'm not really keeping my shields that charged, so that's kind of on me. Oh well. Oh, I don't have boost. This is this is dangerously cheeky. Yeah, okay, I should have done that. Oh well. Oh, uh, now it has the grapple sound autoplay. This bug. Oh my god. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We have a couple sound issues here and there, some of which are still being addressed, like this one. So if you hear a light humming, yeah, that's a bug. Uh, we recognize sometimes when you grapple an object and the object is removed from your possession, even though you haven't ungrappled it, it will keep making the sound like it's grappled. So we got that one in the books. What in-game do you guys have playing? Great question. So there's a number of elements that we want to uh, reach fruition with the in-game. The first is that we want there to be meaningful loot. So we're looking at making sure um, superiors and legendaries have more and fun modifiers established on them to to just hunt for right um, whether that's at unique locations or randomly dropped uh, as well there will also be um a bit of interactions with the ancients in the late game uh, the kickstarter um stretch goal that we hit will create kind of like a procedurally generated run inside of Everspace 2. So it's kind of like we're putting Everspace 1 into Everspace 2 in the late game format, where if you don't want to like go search around specific locations and you just want to get whatever's coming to you, you will create um, a rift in time and space that allows you to fly through and complete a specific mission slash challenge. And depending on how well you complete that, like how far you get and you know all that type of stuff, it will generate loot for you based on how you did there could be specific events through that i've probably already said too much but that's one core aspect of how we are bringing the end game to life and there's a, there's a series of them too so that's not the only thing we got up our sleeves but yeah we we feel like we want to make sure we feel like we want Words are hard sometimes. What we want to do is make sure that when you finish the mainline story, that the game isn't done. We want there to still be more things to go and do, not just super crazy random, but things that give you a particular task to orient yourself towards. All right. Threats destroyed. I'm seeing some conversation back and forth over on YouTube. I want to make sure we're not, uh, I haven't missed any uh, questions, so I'm going to scroll a little bit. I 
think all is well. I'm sorry, you said you did hit the crowdfund goal? So that is for sure coming. Yes, yes, the ancient, uh, I think it's called, is it called Ancient Rifts? Straight up, I think it's called Ancient Rifts. Uh, yeah, we hit that stretch goal. So that is indeed coming to an Everspace near you at full release. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. And yes, you will be able to mix and match uh, different ship parts. Uh, that's that's the end. That's indeed the intended plan. Um, I'm not at a. Actually, let me just uh, go dock here really quick. Let me let me show you. So in the customization of your craft, there are a number of different aspects that you can change about your ship. Um, well, there will be. I should far more say uh because as of right now all you can do is your paint job and your detailing but if you look here we have a planned cockpit and planned ship modules there that that being the key element in this particular discussion ship modules where we want you to not only find all the sweet loot to have the right power but we want you to look good doing it so if you happen to come across a harbinger a2 like what i'm flying right here and you're like i want that exact exact ship model you'd be able to come into the ship modules here and tweak that, adjust that to your liking. Now, um, this is a system that is going to take a lot of trial and error. It's going to be something that's going to come down the line. This is not planned to happen anytime soon, so be clear on that. Uh, besides that, you know, we're going to hold off on it simply because there's a lot more planned ship modules still being built anyway. So, yeah. Um, Brigalisk asks, how's going? Going good. Yeah, it's pleasant. Things are nice. Things are good. Uh, it's been a strong development work week for us. Uh, we were able to iron out some kinks and start to focus in on what makes the Kite Nebula unique. What makes it shine apart from the other sites. And let me tell you what, um, I'm even going to, I'm going to tell you what I straight up told uh, Andreas, who's uh, one of our main headline developers of, of Everspace 2, um, he had asked me, let me let me see if I can find this. Uh, looking at my exchange with him. Um, yeah, so he said, what do you generally think about the new stuff, which is the Kite Nebula, what our play test uh, went through this week? And my response um, with a couple redactions. At first, I thought it was underwhelming, but as I continued through the missions, I was pleasantly surprised by the mission variety and other things. Uh, there were some weird interactions and whatnot, as always when we are getting things plugged in, but overall, the foundation is amazingly impressive to me and I'm delighted to continue through this system. That is what my direct response was uh, to Andy, with a little bit of adjusting here and there. <clears throat> but yeah, so there you go. Um, needless to say, I am quite happy with how things are going, and I am uh, I can be a particular uh, critic at times. So yeah, things are going well, and I think you guys are gonna be pretty excited about uh, what makes Kaite Nebula unique and, and the types of missions that are presented there. But uh, but enough about that. We'll have we'll have more to share on that maybe even next week. But it's very much in a state of incompletion to where if I showed it to you on the screen, uh, first off, I'd get fired. But secondly, it's got a lot of placeholders missing sounds, you know, but it's getting ironed out and it's going to be, I mean, there's, it's a month away. It's a month away and it's going to, I'm excited to see how you guys respond. To it. Inertia dampeners off, people demand it. Okay. Well, 
Well, this ship's kind of designed for it, so uh, probably a good call on your guys' part. Now, yeah, making me more uh, evasive. Okay. Let's go get our equipment that's floating in space. And look, since our inertia dampeners are off, we don't even have to boost. Ha <laughs> ha! Boost conservation! It's a thing! Would you actually get fired? No, I wouldn't actually get fired. I would get scolded, though. I can attest to that. You don't believe me, you can ask Michael, the CEO of Rockfish Games, my boss, who's also making sure questions get answered and uh, that I don't spoil the fun. <laughs> Obviously, there would be some other uh, ramifications for that, too, but I have a feeling you guys knew that. I'm not going to do a dumb. <laughs> All right, so let's head back to Vesna Mining Colony. There's gonna be some story stuff on the screen. I'm not gonna like cover that. We're just going through missions, having some fun. Uh, I think we will swap over ships though. I kinda, I'm kinda craving some gunship love. Um, Cause, oh my gosh, I was uh, poking about, actually it was it was when I was doing the, the testing. Um, I was flying in a gunship and found some hilariously fun and devastating damage combos just because you're firing twice as fast in the gunship um i'm not gonna say that it's like the most damaging ship because there's other combinations that can suit uh, your particular play style um I, i'm a big fan of the striker in that regard actually i think the striker uh is up there with the the potential most damaging ship there is provided in the right situation but man the gunship i think is more all around in that sense so while a striker is devastating close up, the gunship is devastating even from a mid-range mid point. Uh, can really dish out some power. It's it's nice. It's nice. All right, so I think this triggers a cutscene, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are going to skip the cutscene because I don't want to give away new updated polished visuals for the cutscene. Whoop. And we'll answer some questions and then get right back to it. Not unlike the Atlas in Path of Exile, I guess, or the appropriately named Ancient Rifts of Diablo 3 as well. Um, a bit ironic that we have the exact same wording of what our in-game content looks like, known as Ancient Rifts. Uh, but very different, even though similar ideas, yeah. Gabriel, yeah. There's, there's some similarities there. Absolutely. And good reference point too. That I think that helps clarify any other um, action RPG fans out there of pa Path of Exile, Diablo Three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Good reference. Striker OP, but you have to use the alt better. Oh my gosh, the striker's alt is oh gosh. In my opinion, the striker's alt is the best hands down. <laughs> There's not a question. We'll figure out how things progress. There's still a lot more coming to the game space. That could change. It could uh, continue to be the same. It could get even better. Who knows? Who knows? Whew. All right. I wish I could swap my ship from right here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't, so we got to work with what we got. Um, we're going we're gonna to swap. We're going to go to a beam laser. We're going to get rid of the thermo gun entirely. Better cargo unit. Thanks. Mm. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and sell some of the stuff that we're probably not going to use because I'm stubborn in a lot of cases. Selling my sticky turrets. Sorry, Kazaa. I apologize. If you're watching the stream. <laughs> um, we haven't chosen a level 10 perk. What is our problem? Oh my goodness. Well, that's silly. Uh, let's see. We might actually do downtime warrior. Play it safe, I think is real good, but let's let's mix it up. 
Uh, I normally, I always, almost always play with the same perks. Let's change things up a little bit. Plus, we've been running out of energy with these weapons a lot, so this might be a nice counter to that to help balance out that factor. Let's also take a path through this tunnel because it's fun. Not a lot of people go this way. We are going to collide with this wreck so hard. <laughs> um, we'll take that. Uh, recharge booster. Yeah, I think we, we got to do that. We got to take the recharge booster. All right, so collision in three, two, one. Okay, okay, it wasn't so bad. Overcharge shield for the win. Perfect. Oh, I'm so confused where I'm going. Did I go to the wrong side? No, it's it's over here. It's right below, no, it's right below me. Right below me. All right. So we have to open this thing up. Follow the cables. They go over here. Shield generators down. Now we can fire. Here. Now there's a number of things that are going on in here, but uh, we're gonna kind of just ignore that. <laughs> so we're gonna do the story. <laughs> oh, Spoon Knight, I just saw your message because I will remember that. Nice. Uh, miss anything else? It sounds more like D3 rifts and greater rifts uh, than maps and Path of Exile. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> and yeah, and Michael, thanks for the doubling up on uh, transmogging player ships. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I was able to show that on screen a little bit earlier, but yeah, uh, Bearded Frog, if you did miss that response right there for you, the answer is yes, uh, but it will be developed down the line. If mod support becomes a thing, we will see community-made ships. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, to just to be completely clear there, we would love for there to be mod support. Uh, but it is not a priority right now um, because we have uh, we have a specific development timetable to adhere to, and unfortunately, mod support is a added bonus as opposed to a must-have. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. He's done this many times. Yeah, embarrassingly, it took me a moment to figure out where I had to fly to, though. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you can tell it's like, I'll get a message here, and they'll be like, hey, Eric, can you test this mission for me? Yeah, sure. Hey, Eric, can you test this mission again for me? Yeah, sure. Hey, can you try and reproduce this thing from this mission? Yeah, sure. And that leads to, like, tens, if not hundreds of playthrough of a mission. And that's fine. You know, that's fine. That's game dev in a nutshell. That's... That's quality assurance testing in a nutshell, but uh, but I digress. I don't actually know if we made an official announcement in Discord or not, but we we actually hired a, a dedicated QI guy. His name's Josh, and he's been uh, a solid addition to the team so that we are not all wearing as many hats as we used to be wearing and can focus in a little bit more on the aspects that uh, allow us to do our job to the best degree and utilize those skills and abilities to their fullest. So it's good stuff. What am, what am I doing? Now I'm just talking and screwing around with things. Okay. Let's get another drone. Awesome. Now there's a chance I'm going to screw this one up because I think this is the one I don't like. 
No, this this one's fine. This one's fine. That's the other one that I don't like. <laughs> oh, I almost screwed it up. Oh, now I'm now I'm freaking out. Okay. Uh, but the core element of this, as I very poorly navigate this space, is that you are following the green lights and avoiding the red. And you also don't want to cross the shields, the, um, the scan lines, because then you get got and uh, the drone is destroyed and you have to try again. You love how smooth the flying is in this game? Yeah, um... I'm glad. We put a lot of emphasis on how smooth it comes across. We felt like, um, at its core, if you don't feel like you're in control of your vessel in this game space, then we have already failed the game right out of the gate. So it was from square one where we needed to make sure that player control and maneuverability was on point in this game world. So good to hear that that is coming along correctly. And there still will be additional tweaks and modifications to player movement and all of that stuff as well. We just have to get there first. More accessibility options are coming. I mean, there's been a lot added as you guys have seen, like. Uh, dual mouse and joystick support. Uh, we've added, like, Hotas and Hosas are working. Um, we've got, oh my gosh, the, the freaking, what's the, I always forget what it's called, embarrassingly enough. The, um, the crosshair behavior, changing it um, along with the auto move mouse back to center, relative mouse positioning. Uh, we've added that due to a, uh, a request. Like, we're still in there. There's still more coming. There's still more popping in. Lots and lots of stuff. We are also going to do the, um, the, the eye tracking support, track IR. Um, there's still, yeah. So, like, when you're doing this, you can be like, oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's so cool. This is fun now. Still lots more to come. Uh, question on YouTube. Can we please have a more elaborate explanation what transmogging means? Oh my gosh, yes! Absolutely! Wait, I thought you guys were gamers. You should know what transmogging means. <laughs> ah! Anyway, transmogging. In a nutshell, it's short for transmogrification. Is the overarching term. I'm not even making this up. It's a real word. Transmogrification. All right? And that means that you are transforming a aesthetic to look like something else while still providing, generally speaking, still providing the same trait values that it supplies. So when we refer to transmog, it could be something where you're using a tier four ship with engines that do a special thing to your boosting. Just an example, I'm not saying this is gonna happen. Um, it could happen though. But you have engines that do a special thing to your boosting. You have wings that do a special thing for your maneuverability, your rotation. You have a body that gives you a ramming bonus. Okay? And you transmog those wings to look like a tier one version of a different set of wings with different engines and a different body. But you'll still retain your boost from the other engine, you'll still retain your mobility bonus from the wings, the other wings, and you'll still retain your ramming speed bonus from your other body. So you'll have all the aspects that you want now with the look that you want. That's what transmogrification is in a nutshell. And that is planned for what we're bringing to Everspace 2. So thank you for the allowing me to give you more knowledge on that topic. It's a, it's a pretty hot one in regards to customizable loot-centric games. Because you, you want to look the most badass you can. And sometimes the power of your loot and its aesthetic don't go hand in hand. You'd like me to try some mods when available? Man, uh... It's gonna be a while if we get there, but yes, 
I would totally be down to play with tons of mods, like viewer, like fan mods. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I would I would beg Michael to have us do an official Rockfish game stream to just highlight some funny and hilarious and uh, impressive detailed mods um, if, if we end up getting to that space. That would be so much fun. That would be super cool. But uh, let's take things one step at a time though. Make sure that we uh, lock things down as a whole. Starting with the, the Kaite Nebula next, the end of this bump. Um, as a reminder for all of those who don't necessarily know what it's bringing to the table, let me just pull this up right quick so that you guys know straight up what's to be expected in the Kaite Nebula drop. We have revealed that it's gonna open up a new system called Kaite Nebula mind-blowing right we are working on a new light class player ship we're working on a new heavy class player ship uh quick sidebar there it's likely that this is going to release in a similar capacity that we did our last update where we'll have one specific player ship launch first and then we'll add in the second one afterwards it's part of the development process we'll see new enemy types we'll see new creatures Oh man, I'm excited. <clears throat> we'll see new natural uh, phenomena. We'll see new main and side missions. We'll see new activities, mini missions, and challenges. And I'm having a blast with them. We'll see a new companion. We'll see the un introduction of fast travel. We'll okay. Oh yeah, all right, fine, that's fine, you can clap, that's fine. And we will maybe see the, an increased player level cap. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on that one. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on that one, but but all of those things are concrete and those will be happening um, at the release drop of Kite Nebula Stranger Skies, if not a little bit afterwards. But rest assured, it's all in the works. All right. Third heavy ship, drone ship. I think that would be pretty dope. Wouldn't it? All right, we'll wait for this dialogue to pass and then we'll keep going. If I buy a second ship, does it have its own separate loadout? Yes, or does the loadout move from ship one when you switch to ship two? Uh, when you buy a second ship out of the gate um, and you switch to that ship, it'll take your loadout from ship one to ship two. But you can also simply buy the new ship and send it to your home base so that it doesn't get all your components and then you can put a separate loadout on it uh, specifically. In addition to that, the aesthetics of the ship, while it will carry over your customized coloration of your first ship, um, it's completely independent and it's four different customized color op options. So you can change those at will, it won't change your other ships either. Um, each one has their own independent ship colorations and all that type of stuff. And transmog, eventually. You dig the idea of the necromancer, oh, excuse me, of a summoner slash pet ship class. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, I think we're familiar with a couple of those from uh, from other games. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Walter, AKA Wally. It is my pleasure to serve you guys and answer questions. Getting into the locations instead of your actual ship is pretty dope, says Kazan. Yeah, no, we wanted to mix up the formula a little bit so that we could um, provide some unique, more unique mission. A little bit more unique mission opportunities, right? We didn't want everything to be the same, like, okay, take your ship and go destroy the things and then pick up the things and then go do the other thing. Like, we, we wanted to, you know, mix things up a little. The massive wings. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm 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 entering into a conversation. Are you talking about the bombers' wings? 
Oh my gosh, I love the aesthetic of the bomber so much. Is there a schedule date for full release yet? Um, as of right now, uh, the only information I can provide is we're looking at um, next year for the release date. 2022. 2022. Um, also, I will say this. I've said it before in previous streams. Um, game dev is wild. There are a number of new opportunities we've been able to plug into our, our environments, into our systems, and it's shaped and changed a lot of what development looks like. And there's also things that have kind of slipped through the cracks, things that we thought were gonna be much better than what they ended up being and have to like re-navigate some of those systems. So while I say that, you know, we're expected to launch and I think it's, is it summer 2022 or something like that? Uh, halfway, whatever it is that like there's a projection of that's floating out there right now, that's not hard locked into place. I hope it doesn't happen, but I also wanna make sure like you guys know, I'm just being super transparent here, it could get delayed to like late 2022. It could show up earlier to early 20, well, probably not, probably not, no. Um, but like th that date could, it could still, it could still move, okay? Um, but rest assured, if it moves, it's because we're making sure all of the game systems that need to be ironed out, that deserve the respect they need in order to operate to their degree and capacity that is satisfactory for not only the way we're presenting it, but also through the feedback you provide, providing, which has been amazing, that's why we would make those particular judgments. And if, if we change anything like that, if we were to go uh, and say, oh, we're changing dates, we would make those announcements on all available channels accordingly, okay? You would not hear it from me on this channel and be like, oh guys, we're gonna launch in 2078. Like, that's the, wow. <laughs> But you know, whatever, you guys get what I'm saying. We'll tell you when we know, we would let you know if there's gonna be changes like that. So, uh, but right now, plan 2022, uh, I think it's like, I think it's mid 2022 is, is the, the planned release date. So there you go, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of baffling there. So we need to change our tactics because clearly this isn't working. Even, even going slow. I should have been focused more on the combat instead of blabbing. All right, okay. I see to that elite fighters and I raise you one more time. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right, never mind. I thought I just found an insanely awesome bug, uh, but no, I was wrong. All right, these guys are level 14s and they're elites. Um, I have like no augments. Um, let's see, what's what's my stuff at? Let's, let's optimize ourselves a little bit to make this a little bit more even. So yeah, let's do this really quick. So I love this weapon. I'm not sure if it's holding up for us. I'd love to upgrade its level, but we need to scrap something to do so. Oh, let's see. We could upgrade the level of this though, or the rarity. Oh, we can't, we can't make it higher level. Okay, we'll just uh, increase the rarity. Regeneration, nice, okay. Uh, we need better secondaries entirely. Like, this stuff is garbage. Um, we could probably just go with some standard missiles. Actually, could we go... Nope. All right. Um... Armor breaker missiles, though. Or destabilizer missiles.
All right. This is the plan. This is the plan. Yes. All right. So now, um, whoops, that's the wrong button. So now we're going to look at getting some standard missiles as well to plug into that. Wait a second. Let's try that again. Oh, I was on the I was on the improvised. No, we need to the standard missile launcher. Okay, there we go. That's going to be good. So now we've got the standard missile launcher as well as the destabilizer missiles. That will help significantly. Let's see, what else is holding us back? Sensors, don't really care. Armor sucks. Um, this is probably why we keep having energy issues. <laughs> Let's see, can we, uh, can we do uh, energy core? Yes, we can. One chance. Nice. All right, so this should help even the playing field a bit more. Uh, it's not the best, but that should help a lot more. I think we'll also reduce our rear attack critical chance and we'll just straight up add it to firepower. Not adding a lot, but it should be uh, a little bit to help bring things home. All right. I see, get a gunship and wreck them. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, I would love to. Oh my gosh, if we're not fast enough, Tarine's gonna die. Um, hang on a second. Uh, oh no, we can't save. Okay, so we just have to, we just have to save Tarine. So let's see how this plays out. Oh yeah, get freaking wrecked. Okay. as much uh, damage output as I was hopeful for. So we're gonna keep trying. All right, there we go. Another one bites the dust. Circle strafes are my friends. Get him, turret! would end up being, but we had all the tools to bring it to our favor. Even being underleveled, still was able to pull through. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you should be using the stuff that you find in the game, <laughs> but also maybe don't go to higher level locations unless you uh, are truly ready for it. Now, if I had actual stuff that was my level instead of all this modified stuff, man, we'd be in such a better position. Uh, so let's see. Let's let's swap some things out. Man, I love these destabilizer missiles, but I'm not sure if we can afford to have them hog in the spot. Um, okay. Just kind of looking at our new options. No big deal. Ooh, a Zarkov signal decoder. That pleases me. And a shield XC. Hey, that's what we wanted to find earlier. Uh, pulse laser as well. 
I think we're going to go ahead and take the pulse laser. We kind of need something to balance out our uh, lack of energy output damage. Uh, dang, that's great. I think we'll go with this for now. All right. Very good. I don't think anyone is challenging uh, how successful mods can be, Fins. Um, you're good, dude. Yeah, but map editors were so much fun back in the day. Oh my gosh. Treen can die? Yes, Treen can die. Alright, there we go. Let's also grab this shipwreck before we move on as well. We're having some competition for uh, better sensors when we level up. We need to just uh, level up. That's what I'm looking at here. All right, so we're gonna head back over to Union, I think, or the home base. I can't remember. We're going to Union first because we don't have fast travel in this uh, in this version of the game. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, we'll keep moseying on through the story. Oh, whoops. Hang on, I think I missed a... Did I miss a question? It's hard to see through your guys, um very healthy and not at all uh intense conversation <laughs> did i say wait okay so bearded frog i want to i want to be clear uh, on uh, a statement that i made earlier uh you said i don't know how to dissect that statement and the statement you're referring to appears to be uh, how we're saying mod support is only going to be feasible slash important for Aerospace 2 when it becomes successful. So let's let's crack that open um, just very briefly. Uh, I know I'm kind of diving into the conversation, which is already dangerous enough. Uh, but just to be super duper transparent in all cases. All right. Let's just let's just. <sighs> right. Big deep breath, everybody. All right. So. We would love to add mod support to our game so that players could add items, make ships, missions, planets, whatever. We would love that. We'd be thrilled by that. It is not a targeted priority for us to invest our time to develop at this time. Right now, we have a vision for whatever Space 2 is supposed to be. We have a lot more content, a lot more assets still in a working degree or capacity that is going to be presented in that full release window. If we were to go for mod support now, that's a sacrifice we have to make somewhere else in development, namely the content that we have planned. So the focus is to get the content that we have planned done and then, after we have accomplished the task of the 1.0 release for all the things that we have told you we have planned, that we have made promises on Kickstarter, then we will look into, if we can, the aspects of mod support, which will require financial backing in order to put more energy and effort to keep our lights on, to make sure we're all well fed, to implement into the game all right understood we good 
Everybody clear. <laughs> so too long didn't read is we think mod support would be awesome. It is not a priority at this time. Cool. I'm going to keep playing this video game on this live stream. And if you have more questions about what we're up to, <laughs> you go ahead and throw it our way. But I do encourage you guys to tone back the topic of mod support. Because that is our official stance. And we are sticking to it. Cool. Ooh. Oh. All right. Oh, and Nightbot reminded me. <laughs> I, I always forget to say this. Did you guys know we have a demo? <laughs> Every time. Oh my gosh. If you are unsure about making a purchase to support our development and you would just like to see how the game freaking plays at all, play the demo. And from there, if you're like, I want to support development, buy the game, provide feedback. But we have a no pressure situation designed for our premium priced product so that if you want to try before you buy, absolutely please do. Absolutely please. By all means. So no sweat. Man, we are picking up lots of loot now. I'm happy and sad at the same time. Woo, ouch. The madcaps. Maybe I should have got some resistance or structure. Ah, it's a vanguard. Doesn't have a lot anyway. All right. There we go. Greasy Gingo. Uh, yeah, like, and we are all about, like, making sure our ears and eyes are open to what the community is saying. Like, we've been incredibly open in that regard. Um, and yeah, I mean, and this is this is true to like every single development team ever. There is a vision in plan, right? There is a vision in the plan. And that vision uh, is going to be not so much changed, but adjusted and tweaked and modified by the feedback, right? Like if somebody were to come in and like, this is gonna be such a strange example. So bear with me here. It's gonna be, we're going for a ride, okay? Let's say that somebody developed a, the chess game. I was like, hey, I want to provide feedback uh, to your game of chess that you created. You're like, okay. And they're like, well, I think that the horses don't make any sense because everything else on the board uh, is a, a unit, uh, is a, a person. Um, and so I think you need to just get rid of him completely and you could replace it with like a pikeman. You know, it could be something as simple as that. And the developer of the chess board can, you know, say like, well, that's not really... That's not really the, the general aesthetic we had going for it. We wanted to, to name it in order to honor this partic particular lore bit or, or theme that we have going on in the game space. Doesn't mean the feedback's bad, just means that it's not within the vision. You could then also have bad feedback and say, I think the pawn's too weak and it should be able to take any unit, move any place that it wants to at all. Uh, otherwise, nobody's gonna use the pawn units. Nobody's gonna use them, they're just terrible. Nobody uses them, this game is crap. It's garbage, so fix your pawns, you dumbass developer. And then the developer can look at that and go, well, uh, thank you for your feedback that you have provided pertaining to your particular experience, uh, but we're gonna go with this direction that is within our vision with how the pawns work. And when we do that, it's not saying, screw you, we're not listening to you. It's obviously, we've got a vision in mind, right? Like that's. That is how development works. So there you go. <laughs> There's our little wild ride. <laughs> Buff the pawn in chess too. Oh my gosh, I love you guys. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, 
we have our eyes and ears open to the community, truly. Like, there's so much that you guys have been said that has been good. Some of it has been curious and interesting. Some of it hasn't been in the direction that we want the game to go. It doesn't mean that because we didn't choose your ideas or your vision that you're dumb and we're better than you. Obviously not. We just want to make sure that we're all bringing together what's best for the vision, what's best for the community. Because there are absolutely ideas that you bring to the table that are better than what we have. This is also a thing. And we're meeting in that space to make sure we're making the best quality looter shooter open world game that we possibly can where you're playing as a spaceship in six degrees of freedom. Boom! All right. But seriously, buff those pogs. They suck. Can't hardly do anything. Fens, no. <laughs> Don't want to discuss chess. It was an analogy. For goodness sakes, dude. <laughs> retro, retro, ret, words. Retro nutcase. Over on Twitch. Ah. Uh, uh, feedback's gonna be best on the forums, but I'm gonna read this a lot anyway, because why not? One thing I would like to see, some kind of item you can put in your cargo slots to give you extra ammo for secondary weapons. I am not smirking at all. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up that there's more coming. That's all I'm gonna say. I basically answered uh, but you know what, Michael, I didn't say a word, okay? Just for the record. <laughs> we got we got plenty of new tricks and items and and uh, and consumables and and all the fun stuff. To bring it to the table. So yeah, I love it. In the next update, no, goodness gravy. Beard Frog, you calm down. Goodness gravy. We got lots of things that we're working on and a lot of things that still just aren't coming. Uh, I said that weird. A lot of things that we're working on and there's still things that we've had to conclude aren't coming. We've had a, we've, we had a, I think I said this like several weeks back, maybe about a month ago it was, I think, where we basically had to, uh, scrub through our content and what we were bringing to Everspace 2. And we had to say, this is good, this sucks, uh, this is what the community wants, and figure out what was most important and what needed to go. So there are certain things, I will say, I'll com be completely honest, there are certain things that we have talked about in like the dev blogs, like from a long time ago, that from the Kickstarter, there are certain things that we highlighted and said, hey, look at this, hey, look at that, blockouts, testing, that have since vanished, have since been cut off. This is a natural part of development as well. So, uh, and a lot of that is because of the great feedback that we've been receiving through the game. It's not being cut out because, oh, we don't feel like it. It's like, oh, well, that doesn't actually work. <laughs> it would be better if we did this with our time, you know? Uh, Bearded Frog, uh, who is then pointing out Finn's question that gets asked almost every single stream. I'm not, I don't want to answer it again because I keep saying the same freaking thing. I keep saying the same freaking thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you guys, but man. Yeah, I, I know Bearded Frog. Finn's question keeps getting asked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So we did a bunch of dialogue. I probably should have just skipped it. But now we are uh, diving into... Oh, wait. There's floating credits. A decent chunk of credits, too. I will gladly take that. Um... Ah, uh, we'll, we'll take this off. I'm not even gonna focus down the drones like you have to do in Everspace One. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be mean and attack this guy head on. We will disrupt the drones, though. Here, hang on a second. Oof! Guy rams me! How dare he! How was that out of range? Wait a second. Bug? We did have a couple issues with some of our devices uh, in our... And it's a developer branch issue. Uh, that's probably just one that we need to iron out and fix. Alright, let's take this guy out. Is there an option for damage number? Yes. Um, let me just turn it back on. Uh, damage numbers, where is that at? Gameplay? Show damage numbers. On! Here, we need to attack something to get damage numbers. Yeah, there they are. Damage numbers. I'm sure nothing bad will happen if we attack the Ocar here. But yeah, you can see them pop up. Uh, crit effects uh, show up with the uh, the purple background. Uh, man, we need to start getting rid of stuff. I think we've overstayed our welcome though, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and head on out. I'm out of water. Paranoid carrot. Oh no, I, I love that suggestion because it's just so silly. You're you're totally good, dude. And maybe maybe there's like some way that we could implement a discussion point on bulletproof containers and the material that they're made out of. And like have a, a like a cheeky boss or somebody like holding a, a bulletproof container as you're fighting them or something. <laughs> that could be fun. The last time he was out of water, the stream ended early. Oh yeah, I know. don't worry. It's actually, it's incredibly hot in my office space right now, which is the main reason I'm sucking it down. I gotta fix the ventilation in my home. Ugh. So if you start seeing uh, sweat just start running down my face, it's not because I'm scared of you guys. It's, uh, it's because it's seriously hot in this little office that I reside in.
Will there be a cockpit where we can have a Twitch stream on one side, like watching Eric play Everspace while playing Everspace? <laughs> you know, Floor, I love that, uh, but no. <laughs> I have very rarely seen games that implement streamer UI, which I think it's, it's a cool feature. Don't get me wrong, it's an awesome feature. I think it's more applicable for certain games over others. I think if we were to find a solution for streaming UI setup in Everspace 2, uh, it would be a little bit more of a, an inconvenience uh, for our development than not to where uh, it, would, it would actually take away aspects of uh, development. It would actually take away aspects of development. So not, not gonna happen. Just gonna nip that in the bud, but definitely some cool stuff in certain games. Um, also, I'm not 100% sure I can complete this right now because of the development branch that I have. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about our social media right now because, you know, we haven't talked about this in a while where you can go and find us and follow us. Because, uh, you know, even though I do provide a lot of teasers and and plot twists and a lot of conversation every single Friday, uh, it's also important to note that while all these things are occurring, that we also very much uh, make full-blown announcements on our Twitter and on Twitch and on Instagram. Well, Instagram is more of a highlight of your screenshots, but I digress. We talk about various topics on Reddit. Um, you know, it's all here. And for you to be in the know all the time, we do encourage you to follow us with what you uh, enjoy the most. If you're a Redditor, boom, got your outlet. If you love getting all your stuff from YouTube, hey, hang out right here. If you are only interested in streams, that's great. Twitch is your thing, or YouTube, or Steam, that's fine. Um, if you want to harass us all the time, uh, like some people are doing in this stream, <clears throat> Uh, you can obviously be in the streams, but also Discord. It's great. It's super awesome. So yeah, plenty of avenues and opportunities to hang out and, uh, and you know, provide feedback and, and all that type of stuff. Now, obviously, we also uh, want to focus in on how we have uh, the main outlet of feedback is the, the forums, right? Uh, we use the GOG forums and the Steam forums. So if you have a lot of healthy thoughts about your gameplay experience if you think this is something wrong dang it and it needs to change or you just want to give us you know praise or whatever uh that's great go to the forums it's gonna be a great great spot for you to go uh and do just that i think there's gonna be dialogue on the screen i hope there's not gosh dang it adam you be quiet i can't so like as i was saying you guys probably missed some of these links you want to uh <clears throat> Yeah, d definitely check those out. It's all great. <laughs> oh my gosh. But obviously we have completed the uh, main storyline for Zarkov. And we have been, we've been having some healthy progress on the Zarkov, or excuse me, the Kite Nebula uh, story progress. So I can't show that to you. It's not something that's ready to be shown yet. So we are just going to hold off on any and all reveals thereof for a, another stream, another point of conversation. So yeah, again, um, you can follow us in all these places. Also take note of this ship that you see flying. This is a Sentinel, um, Sentinel class. And I believe this is a tier four. Um, and it's also somewhat, not entirely, but somewhat placeholder still of a tier four set of wings for the Sentinel, so this is kind of the stylization that you'll see as the game develops in a, in a late game situation. Wait, is my voice muted? Oh no, you're talking about the, the muted of, uh, okay, no, it's, it's all good. Everything's fine. You're talking about the voices in game. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna head over to Nefty's Plains we're gonna change ships, and for the last little bit, we're just gonna uh, do some jobs, probably, blow stuff up, and hang out.
Uh, and yeah, Bernie Duffy, I, I muted the voices. Yeah, I, I knew that I needed to. Oh no, don't worry at all. All is well, sir. All is well. Where's that sniper? Let's just clean this guy up, because we don't want that pretty significant damage that comes out of them. Silly me using pulse lasers on drones. I guess not too terribly uncommon, because they're technically more accurate than an autocannon, but eh. All right. So let's go look at our ship options. Let's see what we got. We have a Griffin H1 Interceptor. All right. We got a Cyclops A1 Bomber. Nice. We got a Liberator A1 Gunship. I was thinking about picking up a gunship. That might be fun. Uh, another Liberator A1. Just in, so naming conventions for anybody who's wondering. The name itself is of the wings, the letter is of the body, and the number is of the engines. So it's just uh, the fact that these are ide like literally identical, aside from their color, obviously, and their stats, that's also something to point out. Um, that is only because we haven't developed more wings, uh, bodies, and engine types for the heavies. Now, they could be different pertaining to their passives, however. This one has a pulse laser turret, and this one, the turrets will also attack mines. So your passives, even with, uh, uh, I'm blocking the, the view of it, sorry, my body's in the way, but the passives can still be different even between two of the exact same ships. Um, and when you get higher tier ships, they'll actually have more passives on them. They have one unique passive per tier. Uh, let's see, we also have a Mercury A2 Vanguard, which is similar to our Harbinger, with the engines and the body, but the wings are different. We have a Stalker E3. I like that one. That's a pretty ship. Another Cyclops Bomber. And a Raptor E7. Ooh. I like the Raptor E series. The Raptor E line. Um... I think I would prefer a different engine on it. All right, good choices. I really want to play a bomber though, um, just because it's just because it's fun. Plus, it's going to be a nice change from the Vanguard. Uh, oh, we can only afford to buy and sell. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I am looking through for any questions and I'm just seeing people making fun of me. <laughs> Come on. No screenshot time today. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, I get so carried away with trying to figure out what aspects to do for, uh, for the game. I forget to highlight your hard work. And your fan art, oh my gosh. So we actually, we actually, we have a series of elements that I did not catalog proper, but uh, we could, we could pull up some of that stuff. Give me one second. Um, give me one second. At the very least, I still have the fan art that was pulled from last week. Okay, all right. One second. All right, so so because of my error, yeah, sorry, Shuzan, that's, that's totally my bad. That's totally my bad. That was even on the docket for the day. Um, I will show you something that hasn't been seen in a while. We'll do that. So we'll, get, we'll bounce over here uh, and, uh, and we'll look at this. We'll look at this. 
So this has been our progress in the Kait Nebula, and this is uh, a little bit dated now. This is a little bit dated, uh, but still gives you some concepts and ideas about what's going on. So in my error, I will show this again, even though there was no plan to. You can have it. There you go. My error is, t is your benefit. So uh, this kind of gives you a sense of, uh, this, this is also a little bit of how we do like storyboarding um, in the different spaces. Now, obviously this doesn't include everything, but what this does do is it highlights uh, certain key aspects and elements of how we want um, uniquenesses, uh, progressions, elements like that to transcend this space. So by all means, take a little bit of time, just explore what that looks like. I'm not zooming in. I know I did last time, I actually got in trouble for that. <laughs> but yeah. Kamuski uh, asks, can we not pick and choose the type of engine or wings? At this point in time, no. But that is a feature that we will actually add in the future. So you will be able to pick your wings and engines uh, down the line. Wow, that's big. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny because um, knowing the content that's in the nebula, this is like so little of it. <laughs> but I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that it seems like a lot. But there's there's a lot more coming. So. Okay, so, um, yeah, from here, I can show off screen art um, from last week because I don't have what's prepped from what you guys have done from the last, the, from, yeah, last Friday to today. Uh, I know that's kind of like a, my bad, sincerely my bad. Uh, we'll absolutely make sure to cover more of your stuff. But we'll kind of fly by and show some highlights of what you guys have been providing us uh, because it's been awesome. Um, Ashes of Helios was recently added to the Galactic Photographer, for example, and this is one of several of his shots. Um, I also know, oh, something else, something else to point out. So when I go through these shots, these were all chosen by me for particular reasons. Some of them really aren't like super great, but I enjoy them and I wanted to highlight you guys. Michael also may be taking some time to highlight your screenshots as well with this solid, powerful, objective truth to why they are great shots. So it's not just a matter of, you know, art is subjective, oh, I like this, but he will, he will be able to go in and catalog and say, this is why this is such a fantastic shot. Um, he's probably gonna do that uh, eventually soonish. So that will be a delight. These are just ones that I chose. Um, and just wanted to highlight for some of you guys, especially those of you who hadn't taken a lot of photos, just, you know, give you some love. So Bivage, this was one that comes from him, uh, just highlighting the coloration effect of the star nearby in Cito. We also have Blue Fire, who was using the Scout in Everspace One, giving him some love. Also want to highlight this BW Lambrick shot that it looks so retro because of the polygonal forms that are appearing from the explosion and the coloration too. It looks like it comes out of like the 90s or something, even maybe even the 80s. Uh, I just dig that so much. Uh, so it's a good shot. Uh, then we're gonna keep going. We've got Drive Live, who found this little shorty who's just adorable, also from Everspace One, love it. Flory, who's been, you know, very active in the chat today. Uh, we've got uh, this one where he's about ready to completely punish this uh, outlaw bomber with a scatter gun. Definitely delightful. We have Geometry Prime, who I gave a little bit more love uh, this last week than normal, but taking some macro shots of certain elements and then also just using coloration and the, the striker that he just delightfully adores. He flies this thing all the time, like here as well. Um, some nice solid angles and bright colors, that vibrant coloration of this one it really pops, really stands out. I just dig it. We also had High Barf, um, which looks like he's in like this super intense space battle and I, I just dig all the lights all around. Those might even just be like hyperspace lines, super, super light lines, um, but still looks cool. I love the way it comes out. Um, if they're not 
uh, super light lines than a thermogun. Um, oh, actually, that's a bullet. So, yeah, no, that, that is a thermogun. So, we're just nipping that in the bud right there. Next, we have uh, Kazaa, who has a series of shots. They're all crazy. Um, I'm going to highlight Kazaa for a second. I'm going to highlight Kazaa for a second, because he actually posts several incredibly cool takedowns of these outlaw destroyers on YouTube. So, um, so just giving him a little shout out. You could head over to the Discord and see in the screenshots channel or in the gameplay channel where he drops those, because some of them are awesome. Like, he'll fly a gunship and destroy an outlaw destroyer in less than five seconds. And you're like, how? It's insane. Gunship's powerful. That's how. Um, or he will take uh, a striker and he'll use like a particular combination with a ramp up and he'll take it out in four seconds. How? And it's, and it's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. Definitely uh, look to see what he's come up with because uh, it's been insightful, uh, not only for the community, but also a little bit for us. Uh, but mostly things are working as intended. Mostly. Next we have Corius. This was an Everspace one shot. Uh, taking advantage of the light fighter class of the GMB. A nice little highlight, because you can also see how similar it looks in Everspace 2 as well, uh, just seeing it from here. Next, we have Premium Nose, who soaking in, breathing in, if you will, according to his username, all of the aspects of this nebula. We have Salupsis. Salupsis in his battle-hardened Iron Man ship. casually flying out in the midst of nowhere land, and that's totally great. Love the color scheme. Next we have, uh, oh, this was Spoot Knight's recreation of the uh, the waiting uh, page that we have. I thought that was pretty clever. That was a lot of fun. I know we're going through these pretty fast because I got to go soon. Um, but yeah, um, and th uh, these again, these were all from last week. There's even more to go. We'll highlight that next week again. Uh, there's so much to highlight from you guys. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. So this one comes from White Saber, flying down. Love it. Definitely dig the shot. Seeing the underside of the gunship too is it's a nice reminder that there's a lot of detail on the undersides of these ships. Uh, some of you guys completely miss those details, and some of them are are pretty fun, pretty neat. Then we have this other one of a jumping away transport. Digging that one as well. Next up, we have fan art. We're going to go through this pretty quickly, too. This is from Ashes of Helios. He uh, modified the way the coloration works. Uh, he has several that are like this. This one probably isn't even the best one. Uh, but uh, regardless, there's a lot of fun there. Eight had some fun with uh, names of various members of Rockfish itself. Uh, don't stop being awesome, sir. That's a lot of, that's a lot of greatness. This is Hans Christian Cool. Um, that is his actual name, but his last name is K-U-H-L. Then we have Excel with some beautiful screenshots uh, that he doctor up a little bit, flying through Zarkov here. And then this one is two different screenshots combined. This is not one that he just like flipped, uh, but there are two different colored gunships there, which I thought was a clever way to go about it and meshed them together. Really, really great. I want to put this on my wall. We got a couple from Kaza here. Again, he's all about these takedowns. Lots of fun. We also have another one from Kaza where he's put all the medium ships in a row. Super great. Then we have the Chemical Bro who was having some fun with marketing materials like this Transformer uh, uh, gunship from Everspace 2. Super great, super fun. Uh, then we also have this one highlighting all those reds with the contrasted grays. Beautiful. And last but not least, one more from Chemical Bro. Uh, just a solid reflection uh, on the ship itself and exploring the mysterious Zarkov system. So yeah, there you go. I know I cut short your guys' uh, imagery this time and I only had from last week's. Uh, rest assured, we will show even more stuff that you guys have been up to um and i think we're gonna try and get the the videos playing too shuzam is that right we had a couple other some interesting and some fun things that you guys have been up to as well as some suggestions too that i think we want to highlight as well so uh yeah that's honestly all i have for the moment 
um, in regards to these materials, um, I am just gonna straight up tell you right now. I don't, I don't know if Michael uh, approves me saying this or not, but we will have stuff to tease next week. We, we are, we are going to. It's, it's gonna happen. So we didn't run into anything today necessarily, <laughs> uh, but there will be more stuff to talk about, more stuff to show. And I hope that you guys are on board for the ride because I've been having a blast. We really appreciate you guys uh, being with us, asking your questions, having conversations. Uh, we might need to work on <clears throat> certain quote unquote discussions that we open the doors with um, through the course of these streams to make sure that the focus is on community questions because uh, that's honestly what the goal is here. The focus is on you guys. We want to be transparent in our development that remains the focus and we don't want it diluted with very subjective opinions uh, and uh, whatnot that push the wrong direction of communication. All right, that all being said, you have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. If I missed a question, have no fear. You can of course dive on over to the Discord or any number of other locations to drop that question. Uh, and we will provide clarity as soon as we possibly can. But uh, yeah, I am, I'm over time. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do this thing real quick where I say toodles. Michael would confirm it. He's saying that there will be new stuff next week. Ha ha! Yes! Ah! Don't miss it. It's going to be a good one. I promise.